take a hundred. <laughs> I'm kidding. I haven't done that many takes, but I have done many takes for this video. So hopefully we're going to get this one right. In this video, we're going to be talking about macros. Okay, basically we're going to be talking about the breakdown between carbohydrates, fats, and proteins for women with PCOS. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Taryn. I am the founder of PCOS Diet Support. I am a, a certified nutrition coach, and I feel very passionately about using food to manage our PCOS and managing PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome in as natural a way as possible. So if that's something that you have or somebody else that you know has and you want to know more about PCOS, then I really want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications of when new videos are released and you will get the latest info on PCOS. Let's talk about macros. What the heck are macros? Basically, macros stands for macronutrients. When we talk about macronutrients, we are talking about carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. When we're talking about micronutrients, we're talking about the vitamins and minerals that are actually found in the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Okay, things like iron, vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin E, all those things that are found in foods. Those are micronutrients, but the actual carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are the macronutrients. Now, why on earth should we even bother with macros? What's the point in even talking, having this conversation? Do you know how many diets are based on the macro breakdown? Things like the low carb, high fat, low carb, high protein, carnivore diet, um, South Beach diet, banting diet, so many di diets. Look at this breakdown between carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Because each macronutrient has a different way of being metabolized. There's a different hormonal impact of all of these different um of all these different macronutrients. So specifically when we're talking about women with PCOS, we know that women with PCOS tend to be insulin resistant and that insulin plays this really key role in our PCOS. And there's a really close link between insulin and testosterone levels, which are very high in women with PCOS. So if you want to know more about this link between insulin and testosterone and PCOS, then I really want to encourage you to watch this video on the three pillars to managing PCOS naturally, because I go into a lot more detail. But if women with PCOS tend to be insulin resistant, very often the immediate reaction is that if we need insulin to um, deal with the carbohydrates or the glucose in our bloodstream, and we have this problem with insulin, then surely if we lower the carbohydrates that we have, that we will get better results with our PCOS. And that leads a lot of women to try the keto, the keto diet or the low carb, high fat diet. And there is some thinking about that. And there's also some research that shows that women who tend to have a lot more carbohydrates tend to struggle more with their PCOS symptoms. So there is some um, logic to this thought. But I do not believe that you need to be completely ketogenic to manage your PCOS. Also, research shows that women who have women with PCOS who tend to have higher protein in their diet tend to be less insulin resistant and also get really good results. So the question now is, well, if too many carbohydrates are going to be harmful and if too little carbohydrates are not recommended, well, how many carbohydrates should we actually even be having? And what then about fat and protein? So that's why this is important. You can really tweak your diet and see improvements with your PCOS by tweaking these macro breakdowns. Okay, let's talk specifically about carbs. Now, we've spoken a lot about carbohydrates and their effect on, on insulin. So basically, carbohydrates are broken down into glucose and we need insulin to be produced to manage the glucose in our bloodstream. When I'm talking about carbohydrates, I'm talking about things like um, rice. Quinoa has uh, some carbohydrates, also has a lot of protein in it. Um, potatoes, um, pastas, those things that are high in carbohydrates. Okay, that's generally what I'm referring to. Now, you not all carbohydrates are made equal either. You get some carbohydrates that are going to be really refined and processed. Potato chips, pizza, pasta, um, breads, those are, tend to be very highly refined forms of carbohydrate that hit your bloodstream really quickly. Then you get things like sweet potato, butternut, um, some like even basmati rice, brown rice, wild rice, those still are carbohydrates, but they are more slowly absorbed, more, slow, more slowly metabolized, and are possibly a healthier option than the really quickly processed um, or really quickly metabolized carbohydrates. So do you need to go low carb for PCOS? 
No, you don't. We will talk about the breakdown between carbohydrates, fats, and proteins um, pretty soon. But let's first work out what the deal is with protein. Now, as I've said before, women with PCOS tend to do better on um, a slightly higher um, protein intake. It helps us to feel fuller for longer. It helps to manage insulin resistance. And it can help to... um, it, it, yeah, it can help to balance the hormones. Now, a lot of women are concerned about the um, hormones that are found in animal-based proteins and in, in meat products. And that's why I always do recommend, if you can afford organic protein um, and lean protein, then that's always what I would recommend. So the quality of the protein is important. And of course, there are also plant-based um, sources of protein. Generally speaking, the, the plant-based proteins also have a lot of carbohydrates in them, things like lentils, beans, tofu, those are all examples of plant-based proteins. And then let's talk about fats. Now, fat has gotten a bad rap, especially when people were all for the low-fat diet. Okay, so low-fat, everything was low-fat. Low-fat yogurts, low-fat cheese, low-fat dairy, low-fat ice cream, everything was low-fat. But the problem with low-fat is that it also meant that because low-fat, because some of the fats have been taken out, people then put a lot of sugar to make it taste better. And actually... There was research that found that people who followed a low-fat diet also generally put on more weight, okay? So low-fat is not the answer necessarily. Fats are so important. All of your sex hormones are made from fats. Estrogen, progesterone, it's all fat-based and it's important for your health. Your myelin sheath, the the sheath that lines your nerves, all of that is fat. Fats are super important, but it's important to get healthy fats. So now the question, now that you know what carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are, we need to look at the breakdown between carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. How much should we actually be having? Well, because women with PCOS tend to have this difficulty with insulin and carbohydrates, I normally recommend about a quarter of your calories come from carbohydrates, about 35% of your calories come from protein, and about 40% of your calories come from fats. Now that's all good and well. It sounds very good hypothetically, but how does that play out in my real life? Well, there are ways that you can work out what macros or what, um, how much carbohydrate, fat, and protein are in the different foods that you eat. Now, one of the ways that you can do that is using a tracker like my fitness pal is a good example of trackers for your um for your macros basically what you do is you put in what you are eating for breakfast lunch and supper and and um my fitness pal will tell you how much carbohydrate fat and protein you are having and you can then break that down into how much um what percentage of what you're eating is carbohydrates and fats and protein the other thing that i uh, that i have developed is something called pcos foodies pcos foodies is an online app where you get access to to over a thousand um, PCOS friendly meals. I meal plan as well to make sure that you are getting that good breakdown between carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So if you want to check out PCOS foodies, I will put a link in the description below. What I will say is that if this feels overwhelming for you, if tracking every single meal that you eat feels overwhelming for you, I completely understand. And if you're a fitness Um, fanatic and if you've been tracking macros for a really long time then these tools do have their place and they can be helpful but for a lot of people it you know maybe you want to track for a week or two weeks and then you get a better idea of what you're eating and you choose not to track anymore so again those are all options if this feels very overwhelming I completely understand okay and that's why I want to show you what is on your PCOS plate okay that's what we're going to be talking about now. What actually, visually, how do I tell just by looking at my plate that I'm having the right breakdown? And I've, de- I've developed this, okay? Your PCOS plate. Your PCOS plate is basically, we want to fill half of that plate with really good non-starchy fruits and vegetables. Greens, carrots, tomatoes, um, broccoli, cauliflower, celeriac, there are so many incredible options and you can just look at that infographic and see as well as fruits those are important so you want half of your plate to be filled with um fruit and non-starchy um vegetables okay so that's at least 50 percent of your plate then you want a quarter of your plate with protein whether it be plant-based or meat-based protein you need a quarter of your plate to be filled with protein 
then you want some of your plate to be filled with starchy um, or smart carbs, okay? Things like butternut, potato, sweet potato. Um, you can put in rice, rice as a smart carb. Those are the smart carbs that we are looking for. So we do need some of them. The smart carbs are important to us. We just don't want half of our plate to be filled with rice, for example. We need to think about how much of that we are having. And then we need to make sure that we are having healthy fats, things like olive oil, um, avocado, nuts. Those are all good sources of healthy fats. So if all this macro uh, malarkey just feels like way too overwhelming, then I really want to encourage you to have a look. And I'm actually going to put a link in the downloads um, in the description below so that you can download a copy of this for yourself so that you know what that macro breakdown should look like. So that's what I wanted to chat to you about today about macros. I hope you found that helpful. Please leave me a comment below. If you like this video, if it was helpful, I really want to encourage you to give me a thumbs up. It means a lot and it goes a long way for the YouTube algorithm. It's also really helpful for me to get feedback from you as to what videos you like, what videos um, are resonating with you. And then if I get videos that don't get so many likes, then I know, okay, well, maybe this topic isn't really meeting your specific needs. If you have any comments or you, um, you want to ask any questions about macros, please leave me a comment below. I'm really happy to get back to you. Bye.